Okay, this is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper. Welcome back to my channel for wallpaper hanging. And yes, I still am wallpaper. Today I'm hanging a very fine product. If you like it, this is the product. This is a beautiful European, very decorative vinyl wall covering that has a very subtle match to it. Okay, <clears throat> it is a paste the wall product and it has what is a very delicate, what some of us call glass beads um, and they're very tiny. It's very, it, it is glass beads if you look closely, okay? Now, you might have thought it was just sparkles, but it's actually little plastic beads. Not your typical size plastic beads on wall coverings that come with glass beads wallpaper. If you Google glass beads wallpaper, you'll get a product. And, and the beads are much larger than this. This is harder to work with, okay? I'm gonna tell you why. The pattern is very subtle. You have to find it. I have a 12 and a half inch repeat and it's a drop match. But here's the thing with this wall covering. You can't use a conventional smoother. Okay, for obvious reasons. If you've been hanging for six months or more, you know that you can't run a smoother over this. It's just common sense. Although you might start it and might realize you're knocking off half of the glass beads and now you, you have a major problem. This is not cheap wall cover. So what we're going to do is it is to install it in a non-conventional manner. Um, we're going to use a roller, okay? And not a, uh, a sloppy roller, but one that's completely unable to scratch the wallpaper. This is thick, this is your conventional painter's roller. Okay, it's clean. And so I'm gonna roll this instead of smoothing it. I'm gonna show you how to do that, especially around the edges. Uh, one last thing about installation is that these glass beads, if you're not careful, will get on the wrong side of the wallpaper and become eyesores at night when the lighting is just right to show up all of the little bumps underneath your wall covering that you missed. So, before you install this wall covering, you have to sweep it off on the back because it comes rolled against itself. So you can imagine that there are glass beads stuck to the backing. And so you want to just sweep it off before you install it. So you would use your wallpaper's table and you would just simply glue the wall, paste the wall, and then install it on the wall. Now let's go into the bathroom where I'm installing it and show you some of the practical approaches to getting this done correctly. Okay, so we have our wall covering on the wall. A beautiful uh, wall covering, you would admit. We want to make sure it's plumb. And you can see the paste on the wall, right? So you wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to put your level on the paste side, right? Sometimes we don't think. You can put it right on the edge and make sure that it's plumb. After you do that, you're not going to take this and start smoothing away. Just listen. You can hear, okay? I mean, the paper does tolerate some glass beads loss. I mean, that just happens. But in the corners, you will need to press the material into that corner, but you're really only creating friction against the scrap side of the product. I'm pressing against the wall, bringing the product into the corner. Start here, and I move in, like, just like that. Same thing at the top. I'm not going to drag this smoother along the product, but just very gently from starting on the ceiling, pushing inward, starting on the ceiling, pushing inward, starting on the ceiling, 
pushing inward, creating that crease. Okay, same thing over there. And then I can sort of make the hard crease now. And I'm pushing against that ceiling. And now we have one of the sheets almost installed. Now to get out the air pockets, this is a challenge for this type of wall covering. You're simply going to be very careful when you install it, making sure that you don't trap air underneath it. And then you're gonna roll your roller on top of the product to make sure that you lock it down. All right, to get near the corner, you simply flip the roller on the other side so that you can get in close. Okay, nice up and down movement. I can hear my glass beads falling to the ground. Don't worry about that. Just minimize the loss of the glass beads by acting with professional prudence. This is the best manner of installation. Right there. Behind the bowl, I'm taking the knife, guiding it along the corner, making sure that smooth is tight. Same thing with the baseboard, pushing from the baseboard into the wall, making my crease, I make my sharp cut, holding that smoother nice and tight. So why don't you use a scissor? How many tools do you want me to carry on me? Please, have a little mercy on me. Okay, try to make it nice and clean. Clean it off with your finger. Now I'm ready to show it to you. happen to get paste on this material that's okay as long as you remove it properly so we're not rubbing this material you are simply dabbing it with a microfiber okay you want to do the least amount of friction on this product as possible and that's the way you would do it those wet spots will dry remember this is vinyl I think you would agree that the product lends itself to what would be called a seamless wall covering. So in order to get into the corner, we have cut our piece 
at nine and a half inches. Why is that? Because the average distance on this eight foot high wall between the last piece and the corner was nine and a half inches. It was thinner in some areas up here and wider in the middle, as you could imagine. And so <clears throat> we trimmed our piece because with glass beads wallpaper, to manipulate this into a corner while working out the seam, you'll lose a lot of glass beads. This is what you wanna do. You wanna trim it into the corner. And since this is such a very accommodating pattern, you're not going to see any disconnect between these lines, okay? If it were more demanding, I would employ a different procedure. This is the best method of proceeding when you have this type of situation. Secondly, you don't want to be sliding this wallpaper into position. You're going to lift it. Remember, the backing is not pasted. Why is that? Look, look what we're doing here. We're joining the seams. Should you accidentally overlap, you're not bringing paste onto this piece, okay? You're simply pressing this into position and gently guiding it so that you don't get paste on here. Will it come off? Yeah, but remember, you're dealing with glass beads. You don't wanna be pulling off the glass beads. And you can see that our pattern matches. Very subtle. By the way, I found an error in the directions. The directions say that this is a drop match. Clearly, it is not a drop match. We've identified parts of the pattern and they perfectly match up when you go straight across. So there was an error in the directions. Now, you remember my wallpaper liability video and I grabbed the customer right away and got his approval before I proceeded. I said, your directions say drop match. This is one of those unique circumstances in which there is an error in the direction simply because the manufacturer uses multiple labels for their wall coverings and puts them in all of their wallpaper. So we have an error. It's clearly identifiable to an installer, but this would drive a do-it-yourselfer absolutely crazy because we tend to believe the directions, right? Okay, so now instead of sliding that and making glue come up, we're going to roll that and make that seem perfect. piece it together about 10 inches at a time and then we lock it down with the roller I get real close so that I can see the seam so that I can perfectly hide the seam <clears throat> sometimes the sticks work If you want to test your skills with how good you are at wallpaper, I highly suggest that you install glass beads wallpaper because it will test your patience and your ability to keep paste off of the front of the wall covering while hiding your seams. Because wallpaper installation requires a lot of patience and what I would can say what, what I would say is a lot of love if you know what I mean you can't just say ah that looks good enough it's not going to fly with glass beads wallpaper so test yourself get a roll of this stuff and see see what you think about it Okay, let's back up for you and see how we did. Okay, we got 
can start to see the beauty of this stuff. Don't let your imperfect seams interfere with the beauty of the designer who made this product. Take your time with this product and charge accordingly. For your baseboard corners, you're simply going to take one of your fingers and push the material, push it into the corner so that you don't put, put a, uh, a cut mark prematurely above the corner. You want it in there. You want to feel that corner make a mark there. Okay. Now, if you have a need to get this wall covering out of the corner, you don't want to just be getting paste on the front of it. You want to use a tool for that so that you can get the wallpaper out like that. Okay. You get these at your hardware store. If you don't like dabbing your wallpaper with glass beads with a damp cloth, you could always do the following. Now after cutting that piece and then putting this piece into the corner, you can see how beautifully it fits in. If you cut it first, there's no wrinkles here. If you were to just take this whole piece and try to install it, you'd have wrinkles all over here. And the paper is very unforgiving. And you'd have all of this shining back at you if you made wrinkles down there. So cut your corners to avoid that. I know that you like fine stuff, Jenna. And I just wanted to show you the beautiful pattern which I showed you yesterday on a picture. Look at that shimmering. See behind the glass beads, you see that your sisal paper is similar in that it has that shine. But what it doesn't have is that gold in it. You see that? I'll back up. You see it now? You see the gold behind the glass beads. So you have the backing and then you have a shimmering shell. Inlaid is this gold 
And then on top of all of that, all the glass beads. You see that? See those glass beads? So that when you look at it, it's like an impressionist painting. And you don't understand it till you get up close what's causing all of that. 75% done. Fixtures are back. It's looking gorgeous. This is a beautiful product. On walls that are eight feet, you can expect to get two full sheets out of each roll of this product. And then about three quarters of another full sheet. Now, unfortunately on walls that are eight feet, that piece would go to waste only because you can't splice this stuff. You, you, you cannot splice this. There's too many layers to this wallpaper to successfully splice it. Th there's actually a pattern here. This is a match. You have to match this. Those little lines that you see here, they all, they gotta be matched. So you wouldn't be splicing this because of the glass beads on the product. Okay, let's finish our project here and get on to the next bathroom. We come to an outside corner now. Be sure to give your corner a lot of tack. And what I mean by that is, you want to coat this corner on both sides. And you want to let this tack up. In other words, we want it to dry a bit so that when we wet it again we have a double layer of paste and I'm going to put some on the backing of the wall covering so that our glass beads stay in place.
we don't want this wall covering getting fat on the corners. So we gotta take some extra measures. And of course, for those of you interested in this wallpaper, there you have it. That's no good. I don't think I'll delete that. It's a problem. Okay. So we can see that we're not straight here, right? Can you tell? It's a little thicker up here. So we gotta make sure this is straight. We gotta use our eyes and common sense. Okay. <gasps> Before we cut that hole out, we have to make sure we're straight. Very tricky. Very tricky. Now, to do this properly, let's consider what's going on here. We have several stress points that have to be relieved. What's a stress point? A stress point is a point at which the wallpaper needs to be relieved of its non-conformity with the contour of the area in which it's being installed. So this is a stress point here, this whole corner. And we relieve it by simply doing this. Now it's relieved. Our wallpaper is at least temporarily in place. But when we come to this, we have a significant stress point because we have two converging pieces of paper, one here and one here. If you don't relieve it here, you will not get a true read of where the wallpaper lies or falls for the installation. And therefore, if you go to install this flap against this cabinet without having first dealt with A, this is A, over here is B. When we do wallpaper, we must work in consecutive order. A first, and then we can deal with B. If we do B first, which people do, not paper installers, but helpers, they get all of this in place and then they got a big buckle here. And then when they work out the buckle, it's all crooked. This line will come out like this because they didn't deal with A first. So don't let it happen to you. A first, our paper is straight here. And that's why we were able to cut that. And not this first, but that first. This is all A, 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 A. And therefore when we came to here, we relieved that corner by cutting it. And we relieved the stress. So now I have a better read of where I need to cut the next stress point, which is right there. And that's why you'll see, you see that corner forming right here? Look at the bottom. It's cut right there. If you cut it in the wrong place, you're gonna tear your wallpaper. You see, you won't tear the wallpaper because I've cut the stress point in the proper place. It's no longer stressed. When you cut the stress point, you're relieving the wallpaper from being inclined to tear. Now, we come to this. So, this stress point allows me to turn my wallpaper onto this wall. But we have another stress point right there, and I have to cut that in order to turn this onto this wall. But now I have this. So now here's a tip. Keep this wallpaper straight with this. If it's straight here, it's going to be straight there, right? Watch. Watch, watch what you would do wrong. Okay, let's cut it. 
Oh no, you're gonna be cutting it wrong. You, see, this is what a new paper hanger does. He cuts it like this. <laughs> well, just watch what would happen. Let me make the impression on it. Look at how your cut would be. You see how crooked that would be? You can see the impression I made, right? So you keep it here, and then you take your knife, and you cut against this. You're not cutting this. You're using it as a guide. And then you get a perfectly straight cut. After having cut that, now I can push this in. Nice and easy. Use your fingers. When you start using tools, you start marking out the paper. At least you can feel if you're making any marks. You can feel it. Okay. Now our paper is in there. And then, in order to make this corner nice and sharp, we're gonna do a double action. In the police department, we used to call it double action and single action. If you had a double action firearm, you had a two-part firing system single action. We're going to do double action, meaning when I put this camera down, I'm going to be able to do what I'm doing here, while also, with my other hand, pulling the paper this way. This way I'm flattening it out here and pulling it in there with two hands, okay? Once you have all of your stress points cut, here, there, here, here and here. Now we can go around and trim our paper, cutting up against this side of the smoother. If we do this side, we're going to be short a sixteenth or a hair. Not good. Now we're going to relieve the stress point at the top so that my corner can lay down nice and easily. Let's do that. There's a lot of tension on this wallpaper because it's so thick. So you can see that I can close the gap if I keep nursing this seam, keep coming back to it. Because you can see, watch it, it closes, right? And then she opens up, right? Okay, so you'd be foolish to just take the break for the day or finish up for the day and to leave this like this. If you do, when you come back the next day, this is what you're going to have. Or worse, that. Now here's what I've opted to do at the top. Has anybody considered putting a piece of wallpaper at that wide gap at the top? You see, here's what I see. I know wallpaper, and um, I don't expect it to comply at the top that wide. Now, this is not my fault, but as wallpaper installers, we're also creative, right? We have to be creative. So, what would you do to fill that in? Well, how about we take a piece of wallpaper this big and put it in there? What do you think about that? Who says yes? 
Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do because I want you to step up your game as an installer and I want you to get with it as far as being creative. I'm going to show you what we can do. We can do this with cork wallpaper and we can do this with abstract wallpaper like this. It's very busy and very subtle. You can barely tell there's a matching pattern here. Okay, so what we're going to do is prepare to put a piece right in there. Wish me luck. Making a template by recording the gap by using a piece of paper. But I can still see the white, Spencer. Yeah, I know. So can I. Okay, now I'm going to do my adjustments. Okay. We're going to move this over. See that? I'm sorry, I just get emotional. I'm like really in love with your work, man. It's really cool. Oh, that looks really good. So I got this uh, alter ego. So let's say somebody introduces me to somebody and the person who does the introducing isn't there at the moment. I'll go up to the person I'm supposed to meet and I'll be like, Oh, hi, how are you? Oh, very nice to meet you. I heard a lot about you. Um, I, I enjoy doing what I do. I really love it, and uh, it's such a pleasure. So I'll only do that in limited circumstances, like if I'm at a, you know, I want to say a party, but I don't really go to parties. Um, I'll make it where the person who does the introducing has to explain, like, what is wrong with this guy? What's wrong? What do you mean? What, he's a good guy. He's talked very weird. And and nobody is going to start imitating it, you know. He does? No, he's from, he's from New York. And, uh, you know, it'll come out later on that I spoke like this. I think that's hysterical. Anyway, what are you guys thinking? You like it? Oh, Spencer, I mean... I, I really never really say this to people, but you're really amazing. See, now, we don't have to fight with the wallpaper, man. We're hangers. We don't fight. We create, okay? Now, you would agree you can't do this to every wallpaper, right? But we're creative. We know when we can do this. Right or wrong? Then we're going to get our wheel out. Watch this. Hold on. Let's get the wheel. Let's get our wheel. Let me get the wheel and go off camera for a second. This is going to get trimmed. I'm waiting for it to dry. 
and get really hard so that I can just right now if I cut it it'll move the woodwork trim was wavy and so I took a separate piece of wallpaper as I did above remember when I showed you that and I pieced it in there and this will help me fill in the unevenness created by the installer of the trim.